podcast. How are you? Hey, world. How's how is it hanging? <coughs> Everyone. I'm good. How are you, Will? Oh, I'm do- doing dandy. I'm a little thrown <laughs> off. I don't know if you notice anything different, but no, I'm not wearing You got a hat. mustache. You got a boob job. You got <laughs> oh, a hat? Because my I forgot that my daughter was playing with my hat earlier today and left it in the other room. We're out of hats. <laughs> yeah, That's it. I know. I, actually, I don't know. So. We actually might still have hats. Oh, there you go. You know what? I'm I, not going to look. I, I will get the hat in a little bit. Uh, well, we'll get on with our usual hellos and whatnot. We should get a bunch of hats, actually. You should have yeah. You should have a closet full of hats, like a cartoon <laughs> character. Yes. Anyway, hello, everybody. Uh, how are you doing? Uh, Bob, don't sound good. It's I'm dying. That's it. That's the end of it. Yeah. Uh, you might realize uh, this is the Wolf Den podcast with the retro future, and uh, Will is not the retro future. That is Will. Nope. Nope, sorry. Here's what's ha- here's what's going down, guys. We uh, I can be if you want Merry to. I, I have a really bad British accent. Hope you all get what you want and some more. I don't understand why <laughs> I have the the alerts muted. I have to unmute them and mute them again in order to get it to work. There's always problems. Dark yeah. type. Thank you for the seven months. Merry Christmas, Mother Effers. Hope you all get what you want. Thanks. I appreciate it. I hope I get what I want to. Um, it's. So we pre-recorded with the retro future, uh, because he's in Jersey, not, not that Jersey over there. No, old Jersey, original Jersey, probably you know, Jersey probably, that is probably Jersey that is not there. crappy Long Island. Yes, yes. Uh, so yeah, he's in a uh, much different time zone. So I recorded with him earlier in the, in the day. Uh, we have a big long conversation with him. It's great, and I'm going to play that for you in just a second. Uh, we also have coming up. We're going to talk about me and Will over here. We're going to talk about how they just leaked a bunch of stuff about the Switch development. There's a bunch of mm-hmm. new documents from the Switch development. Uh, Genki has a new uh, device that they're coming out with that's like wireless HDMI. Uh, so oh. we got- Kind of, but not really. We'll get into that. We will get into that. Yeah. We sure will. Uh, a lot of stuff about Cyberpunk that we're probably going to never The never-ending never ending game saga of what should have just been a nice little RPG has turned into a garbage fire. <laughs> yes. Uh, we got Doug Bowser did an interview with Polygon, and we got Halo games are not going to be on. We got a lot to talk about. We got a lot to talk about. Yes. But first, we have to get through a whole interview with uh, the Retro Future, which is great. I love him. He's a great guy, Elliot. Um, we talked a lot about his videos. He does a lot of uh, retro portable devices and whatnot. Uh, and so I don't usually watch my friends' videos. I don't watch. I don't. It's something. I just don't do it. Yeah. I he's the only youtuber that i know personally that i actually watch his videos and it's it's nothing against everybody else it's just i don't know it's just just how it is jin wong thank you for the seven months love watching wolf bros thank you i love you being here we love having you uh i guess we should just play it well yeah just go for it hopefully everything goes well yeah, and hopefully by the time it's over i will have my hat and a nice cup of tea (laughs) uh i will be in the chat as well so yeah. take it away, past Bob. Elliot, hello. How are you? How are you? How are you doing? <laughs> Hi, Bob. I'm good, mate. How are you? I'm wonderful. Uh, it's so it's so bright in here right now. What? What do you mean? In my in my frame, it's bright. Usually, I do this at night. So oh, right. everything looks. I thought you were talking different. about the fact that I just. Pulled out all of my no, lights. Oh, I know. You just stuff. made a hole. You 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 did yourself up for this. <laughs> yeah, you should have seen me ten minutes ago. There was a flickering light. It was awful, but we're okay now. Pikachu's in the background. Pikachu's too. watching over us. It's fantastic. Oh, don't want to put my finger there. Hey, Pikachu. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, Pikachu. <laughs> Elliot over here, the retro future. We have uh, a couple things to talk about here. Uh, first of all, you just did a video where you gave Mr. Beast and his crew some custom Game Boys. 
I know. How did that happen? And I want to talk about that. I'm, I'm, I, I, I have, I, I, uh, I have some words for you. You mm -hmm. DM me about this video. Well, first of all, I DM'd you. Well, no, I commented. I was like, oh, I'm here before <gasps> a million views. Bob. Have you seen? You're not subscribed. No, I am. I am. It says subscribe, you idiot. It says it right yeah, but there. Look, look down. Move your eye line down just to the bottom of that screen. Oh, get out of here. Get out of here. That's <laughs> another thing. You have a second channel, and it has a lot of subscribers. I know, mate. Yeah, I, I don't... Like I like to look at the second channel as being like my my really like intrigued audience about what I get up to. So I would say like that figure is like the a representation of like people that want to see me do other stuff, which I think is really cool. It's a really freeing feeling. Do you know what I mean? Like there's loads of stuff on there. We we've talked about this before. Like uh how your second channel is just kind of uh stuff that you just like to do because our, our main mm. channels always have to be uh they have to play to the algorithm they have to be like you youtube wants us to do one specific thing like for me yeah. it's the nintendo switch stuff even though i'm trying to break out of that um so your second channel is very similar to your first channel it's just you're like it, it's like slightly slightly off kilter yeah i mean everything's a lot lower effort like if you look at that 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 second one in there, the acrylic box protectors. Like you can see, it's like Emily was just filming on my. Oh, that was a, an iPhone clip. Um, Emily was filming on my little point and shoot camera. Um, there was very little cuts. It was very raw. That wasn't planned. It wasn't structured. It was just me unboxing some stuff. And like you know, it, it's never going to get a lot of views, but this is like a really personal one-to-one -one thing like and and the fact that five thousand eight you know it's a one to five thousand eight hundred and thirty six thing like it's a you know it's still a mm -hmm. it's still a lot of people watching um but it's definitely not a money maker it's just like a it's just documenting extra stuff that i would be doing anyway you know what i mean right How in a lower effort way so that people you know uh, hopefully the day won't come where people are like excuse me, but I think you could do with upgrading your camera quality now or putting some more work into the editing. This is not meant to be that. This is meant to be iPhone clips, random stuff that I order, bit of fun, you know? You'll see there's videos about cars on there. I'm doing a video about, at the moment about a car. Um, there's that, loads that, of random you're, you're, stuff. You're currently like... like uh, refurbing a car? What do you, how do you... <laughs> what's the, what's yeah, the actual... Yeah, I'm currently doing videos? a little... <laughs> well, actually, I'm not. This is not that video. This is a. Have you ever watched the Inbetweeners? It was like a British television no. show. Oh wait, <gasps> wait, wait, wait! I might have. Yeah, the Inbetweeners. Yeah, like a clip on YouTube. Oh, like the well, yeah, the, the Inbetweeners. So if you type in Inbetweeners car, you can see it a little bit there in the background of one of those photos. Well, I don't want to. So, uh, oh, this it's is a it's a Fiat <laughs> it's a Fiat Cinquecento, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and I bought a Fiat. Uh, say Cento or something like that, which is like a, a slightly newer, more curvy model. But I bought one of those, refurbishing it. I bought a red one, and I'm putting the red door on it as well. <laughs> so oh I'm just doing goodness. a little like <laughs> second channel video on that because I actually want that car. Oh my god! But on your main channel, you do, uh, I mean, retro modding, and you have all these little portable emulators and whatnot. Yeah, portable stuff. And just retro stuff. retro stuff in general. Uh, yeah, every now and again, there's a a thing on there that's not necessarily a Game Boy or a mm -hmm. or a whatever. You did a Walkman. Was that on the second channel though? I don't remember. No, that's on the main channel as well. I've done oh. main channel Walkman videos. But as you said earlier, you know, when you do that, you are you are destroying your future videos. Like you know, you then have to start building up momentum again. Right. Like because the views aren't there and people hate that <laughs> we, we, we complain a lot in the dms about uh about that about it's just frustrating that f's us <laughs> yeah it's just frustrating that it it goes from being like your channel where you've got this audience to like the way i think that it might work and obviously i don't know and no one does know but like there's probably like keywords so for wolf then it's like switch and best and uh, new or cheap or affordable or you know whatever those keywords are and then you upload a video about anything that isn't those keywords and then YouTube's like 
adios my friend see you in the next one yeah. <laughs> you know and so it just doesn't there's no momentum behind it there's no there's no pushing it so i just think that um the second channel is there for me to stay sane and the main channel is there to do videos about stuff that my channel is predominantly about right and uh, i think you've got a similar vibe going on yeah but i just i don't do as much on my second channel i mean i i've been doing a lot on uh the clips channel and on twitch and stuff uh i don't do i haven't posted him on my personal channel in a long time right uh, i would love to get the clips channel to be at a at a point where it's like kind of sustainable right now the clips channel i'm just i have two editors that work on it and i'm operating it at a loss i'm just giving them money to put some content on it <laughs> well if you are in a position to do that i'm sure you're making a big difference to their life Oh, thank you. It's not. I'm sure it's not that much. <laughs> I'm not sure it's not enriching. Um, you have almost a hundred thousand views on this Mr. Beast video. I know. There was a point oh, in your life where you were like, "Oh, my channel's dying. It's not going to do it. I need. Oh, I thought it was going to do better than what? this." <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Um, I uploaded that video at like three a.m. Um, oh, which it's the time I have difference. never done ever before. So I stayed up till like 3 a.m. We were editing that, me and uh, me and the editor Kai. Um my girlfriend stayed up with me, and you know, it was just this like massive exciting thing. And then it went out, and and I was just like I'd never done that before ever. I've always I always upload it around sort of seven o'clock in the UK, which for you is whatever the time is going to be in like two hours time seven o'clock at night or in the morning uh in in the in the evening so for you okay. it's going to be like four or five o'clock or something like that uh let's see what time is it for you now two o'clock it is 12 30 oh 12 30 okay so two o'clock in the u.s is when i usually always upload all of my videos mm -hmm. so for me to upload it at 2 a.m which for you is going to be like nine pm or or something crazy like that um all of my uk audience were asleep so it went out and then it was just like it was just like a piss in the wind there was like not really a lot of momentum why um, but why, why did you choose that specific time just like my my i forgot i kind of just wasn't thinking at all from the from the perspective of um continuing on in in line with my channel sort of parameters that youtube have got my channel out I, I don't know you know i was just like so excited to put it out that i didn't think at all about oh maybe i should wait to the more optimal time from a view perspective and you know what like the, the video has exceeded my you know i'm so happy with with the res response like you know even though um i've done other videos that have been a lot lower budget a lot lower effort a lot lower um substance or whatever uh and, and they've, they've gone on to get more than a hundred thousand views um the response that that video's had it's had like eight thousand likes and like a hundred dislikes which is literally mm -hmm. the most um, incredible like ratio i've ever had it's had over seven or eight thousand comments or something like that which is obviously insane you know there has been so much love and support for that video um and it's so much better that you've got that quality of of viewership over just quantity of people um you know just viewing it for the sake of viewing it like it's it's definitely just been it's been great it's been really great you know in the uh, in the uh uh i'm having a i'm having a stroke <laughs> you, you, okay? know, you, okay? know in the analytics, <laughs> you know in the analytics when you see that curve of like of of a uh, uh view count and and uh and uh what do you call it uh my average or my when you see the oh, impressions, yeah. the curve of impressions, I'm curious to see what that looks like because it's been doing really good over time. My curve of impressions. Yeah. You ever look at that? Mm -mm. You go into the, the. I mean, we're not going to do it right now on stream with everybody watching here, but if you. Well, I, well I'm, my screen's not showing. I can do it. If you go to uh, the video, if you go to the video and you go yep. to analytics, and I think it's yep. the third tab. Yeah, engagement. Yes, I believe. Um, let me just double check here to make sure I'm doing everything. Yeah, engagement. 
Yeah, that curve. Yeah. That curve is how many, how many, uh... No, wait, no, that's the wrong thing. You want reach. It's the second one. The second tab reach. is impressions. Okay, reach. Uh, so that's the impressions. That's how many times YouTube is, like, sh trying to show people the video. So impressions, 864,000. Uh... Yeah, that's a lot. But but what's that curve look like? Is it going up and up and up and up? No. No. <laughs> looking, no. Right now I'm looking at my Bob Wolf channel, which is not a good barometer. I got to switch to um, Wolf Dead channel so I can have some more. Yeah, I mean, no, like here, here's here, this is this is exactly what I was on about before. Like notification, notification, notification click through rate. This is so uninteresting, by the way, to everyone probably watching. <laughs> but notification click-through rate, 3%. That means that 3% of people, when they got the notification that I released that video, clicked it. And that is what I mean by, like, all of my UK audience were asleep. So the in the first, like, 24 hours, the video had, like, 20,000 views. So, so yeah, that's that's, like... In YouTube's eyes, that's bad. Like YouTube wants, uh, I'm not talking. I'm not telling you this. You know this already. I'm telling everybody else this. Um, when you get, when you push out a video, and uh, everybody gets a notification, all your subscribers get a notification, and they have, if they don't click on that notification, Hopefully. that's points. <laughs> yeah, that's points against you if they don't click on that notification. Yeah, so yeah. Elliot posted this video uh, late at night, so there's nobody to click on the notification. <laughs> Do you, know, do you know what I do sometimes? Sometimes to my friends, what? I if they see it? that they've uploaded a video and it's on my um, and it's on my homepage, like my record, my you know, like YouTube showing it to me, I'll click on the video, I'll leave a like, and even if I'm too busy, I'll just leave it playing so that, so that they've got the in, so that they've got the whole um, watch time there, and it's not like I've just clicked on it, liked it, and left. That, that's what I tell my parents to do. When they watch. <laughs> I know, that's I don't mind to do. my mom's like yeah i turned it on and i like watched like a minute of it i'm like no you gotta watch the whole thing that <laughs> doesn't count. don't do that <laughs> or just turn your phone off at least just if you see it turn your phone off don't scroll past it because you killed me <laughs> <laughs> well what i've been trying oh, to good. say elliot and it completely backfired i've been trying to say this video is doing a lot it's doing really good and i'm very proud i know you're it. just it's like calling me out on how bad it's doing right? <laughs> <laughs> it's doing at first you were really worried because it wasn't doing good especially compared to your other videos which is ridiculous because it's a freaking video that you did with mr beast which i know YouTuber yeah would kill to do mate um, it's it's been insane like the whole thing has been insane and there's absolutely no way that it feels like any of it is real. Like I, I 100% it is the most numb I've ever been to anything I've ever done. <laughs> I just can't even like, I can't even comprehend that it even happened. And the whole way through, this has been eight months in the work, the whole way through, it's just been so numb because it's kind of such a shock that, that it was even able to happen, you know? And, and there's, he's put in so much time into into making it work for me. And and his team has devoted so much time into all of that. And I've had loads of updates from his team the whole way. I've had updates from him. Um, I've had concerns that he's, you know, he said, just call me and, and I've called him and then he's given me 20, 30 minutes of his time. We've had multiple phone calls. And like, there is no way if you said to me that a YouTuber with 50 million subscribers is going to give you their time and not just on one occasion throughout an, an entire eight month period where he is doing massive, massive things with million pound budgets and huge things which are super um, time consuming that he's still going to have time for me. Like what kind of, you know, are you would you ever expect that's going to happen? You know, you just kind of don't. But it's been incredibly humbling. It's been very, um, it's been a very great experience and i'm incredibly honored that i was able to do it just from as even if people don't want no one ever watched it just the fact that um i've seen you know that side of someone that you just don't expect you're ever going to see and it's been incredible you know he's just put so much time into it like i really would just like to buy him a beer and say thank you like on a serious one-to-one mm -hmm. -one, no cameras level like because hopefully they do realize how much that means to someone with little subs like less a lot less subscribers right. but it it may be that he's in the world of his current um the noise of his current success that he kind of can't really put himself back into that mindset of uh 
of someone who has 300,000 subscribers and how incredible that opportunity could be for them. So hopefully he does realize what it's, what it means to me. But um, yeah, if not, hopefully one day he'll, he'll know. I mean, fr- from, from a viewer's perspective, it seems like Mr. Beast is like a really like a, you know, compassionate and cool guy. Yeah. He's like, but it's just like crazy. That that's the other not YouTubers. a character. Yeah. Yeah. That's not a character though. Like that mm-hmm. is him. Like I've dealt with a lot of YouTubers and that's not the first YouTuber. That's not the first big YouTuber that I've built Game Boys for. I've built um, Game Boys for multiple YouTubers and it's, I've asked pre, like beforehand, would you like this to be a public thing or a private thing? And they'll just do it a private thing, which means I'm not going to post about it. I'm out of respect for them. I'm not going to um, make videos about it. And I've sent them to them and it is absolutely not been a, the same experience at all. Right, right. In so, my yeah. experience... Uh uh youtubers are assholes <laughs> well <laughs> hopefully not all of them uh no every single one no, i'm kidding um they look great by the way all these game boys this is retro yeah. modding uh did they design it yeah. or did they just print them no so they were um they were commissioned by an art so they, they commissioned an artist oh, to okay. do um if you skip right back to the start of the video uh just keep panning your your mouse across then i'll tell you when to stop no, it's um, too late. i think you might be on a delay okay keep going keep going um that you saw it there we go yeah. if you look at those that's like the the artist did all of those initially i was just building them for him so i was just i just said can you do me three um and can you send me some spares in case anything happens? And then he was like, do you reckon you could do them for my team as well? And then I was like, well, I've got six of them here, but in <laughs> hindsight, I would have loved to have done six different designs. Right, right. But um, I think they're still grateful with it. And it's crazy. Like the uh, the guys that in Mr. Beast's team um, have loved them so much that they've asked me to, if, if I can make them some more for their family members and friends. And uh, Game Boy is such a, I don't need to sell it, you know, if you pick up a Game Boy, you're going to have fun. It is a guarantee. You know, if you've got five minutes to set aside to play a Game Boy and play some Tetris, you will have fun. <laughs> Anyone can have fun. It's not, you don't have to dedicate the next half an hour to understanding how to play the game. Look, can you see that editing mistake? How depressing is that? The white what? line's missing. Oh, the line. <laughs> yeah, I would never have even noticed. And, look, and if you go back earlier, you can see the line just pops up in a random clip. <laughs> It's very emotional. <laughs> Retro modding is the company that uh, uh, Game Changer Mods works with. Our, our friends, Game Changer Mods. So they, yes, it's Greg, the same right. company that did the Wolfden. Uh, is, it, is it Greg? Oh my God! Is it Greg? It, it is, is Greg, Greg, isn't it? It is Greg. It's yeah. Greg and his brother. Um, yeah, Retro modding. Are, as I said in the videos, in the video, they are, um, they are pioneers. You know, they are seriously doing bits out there with with the with the community and obviously it's a business thing you know of course it's going to be a bit it has to be a business but they genuinely have a lot of passion and strive to find new new things that aren't previously available you know it's they're investing into stuff that they might not even get a return on just so that they can have it there for people you know, like they've doing like links and Game Gear and Neo Geo Pocket stuff, and there's not even a big community in that. But with China, when you buy a mold, you're spending tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah, it's, like that. it's, it's a passion Pocket. thing for them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. It is. It's just like a. It's fun for them, and they clearly enjoy doing it. Um, and they have a lot of fun. You know, Gary, the guy that who's been doing the a lot of the, the work who made that Mr. Beast um, thing really possible. He's just genuinely so excited about it all and so passionate and so grateful. Like everyone is, of them is so grateful. Uh, speaking of which, we can talk about more retro botting stuff now that we're done talking about Mr. Beast. <laughs> <laughs> um, so have you seen this thing? How, 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 how uh, up to speed on you how up to speed are you on the uh, current like portable emulator market? All of the weird little like cheap Chinese ones and the Bit Boys and whatnot. Um, they get personally a little bit boring. Yeah, I I don't blame you. They're a lot. They're a lot the same. Yeah, it just seems like 
like my description of these things is that they have made them look incredible and everyone's doing different things to make them look incredible you've got metal shells you've got different analog sticks at different levels you've got glass screen lenses you've got rechargeable USB-C wireless charging all the bells and whistles and then they put a price tag at one point right back when these first started really being a thing back in the the Pocket Go Era 1, which was just a family clone in a tiny little thing, you were paying like $20 or something like that. And yes, you can pick one up now for $20, but it's going to be absolutely dog, right? Now, the price tag on these things, because everybody wants aluminium, and if it's not aluminium, they're like, ah, but it, it's not <laughs> aluminium, and you can get aluminium. And then if it's not USB-C, they're like, ah, and it's not USB. Like It's just everyone's so like bogged down in it. And then you sit there and play it, and it's absolutely fine. <laughs> it is absolutely fine. Like it's they're all fine. They were all fine from the start. And the yes, there's a little bit of latency. Yes, there's a little bit of lag. But that was fine when you were paying like twenty or thirty dollars for them. But now when you're paying a hundred and twenty, two hundred, whatever it's going to be dollars, and it's got a metal shell or rechargeable, blah 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 blah. And then there's a little bit of like latency or lag no amount of aluminium shell is going to get that gone all right you are dealing with emulation from a chinese handheld they're all the same they've got different (laughs) names with different letters and numbers nobody cares i'm waiting for one that's actually really gonna like shock me the problem is that that the problem is that they're all uh just such minor improvements over the previous models that but if you were to play one that was made yesterday mm-hmm. versus when the uh when the even when the I don't know if you ever remember the Revo um nope. the Re- yeah the 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 Revo K101 that was one that did um game gear I think uh, and then you've also got the the Dingu right I don't know if you remember <laughs> the Dingu you're making but that is going now. back like no 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 10 years plus <laughs> If you go back to the Dingu, like A320, I think it was called the Dingu A320. If you pick up that, okay, that's going to do all this your is February of this year. Yeah, but that was because Revo K101 made a second generation uh... of it. These things are actually a few years old now. Uh... Um, but if you type in Dingu A320, I think that's it. D I N G. Oh, no, no, no. Two zeros. Two zeros. Two zeros. There we go, like that. Well, Sorry, two O's. Two O's. Uh, okay. Uh, Amazon. You can see when that came out. That came out. This. Wait, go back on that. Wiki- terrible. Go back on that. Um, on that Wikipedia thing, on the side. February two thousand and nine. Mate, if you picked up that right and the BitBoy Pocket, whatever that it is now, right, I guarantee you the difference is going to be like just the tiniest little bit of latency or the tiniest little bit of lag. And here we are 10 years later and they're basically the same thing. I did a video on it. I did a video of the Dingo A320 versus like the newest one and it was just like, yeah. I was just, exactly just going to say, that's a good idea for a video <laughs> right there. It was exactly the same. Yeah, I, I think uh, this is pretty cheap by now. I think Izzy, Izzy made one as well. This Our good l- friend. This literally looks like uh, a DS Lite just chopped in half. Yeah. That's yeah. It was freaking terrible. <laughs> like the, <laughs> the build quality of it was quite frankly disgusting. Mm-hmm. The plastic was was so soft. You could just like tap it with your nail and scuff. I mean, there are the build quality has always been pretty bad. But again, they're getting very minor improvements over the last couple of months. Like every mm-hmm, month, can you see how the price best one. is creeping up? At one point, these were a good idea because they were a cheap way for everyone to play everything yep. slightly well. And now they're a very expensive way. And it's worse than Apple. You buy an iPhone, the next year you buy the next one. You buy one of these Pocket Go A325193s, and then the next month, someone else comes out with a new video like this is the best one (laughs) and it's just like damn it my other one's just arrived because it came from china but they're all good like you said they're all fine they all do the job well unless the next one 
plays N64 games and the next one plays Dreamcast games. Then you got a problem because you're like, ah, oh, shit, I wish I got the one that plays the Dreamcast games. I compare it to like an audiophile who will listen to a, 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 a some headphones or a record player and they'll go, uh, actually, the mid to low end spectrum is not quite in line with that of a... a f- and then they just reel off some like £20,000 like record player and some crazy... You know, those sort of people exist and, and that level of nitpickery exists. I'm not interested in any of that. I just I, want something that's going to be fun. I think those guys are snobs too, largely. But then that makes it hard for me as a YouTuber, and I'm sure you'd agree, to make a video about it without people in the comments going, but... But if I had it on full brightness with the volume at 80%, how long is the battery going to last? And it's just like, <laughs> just stop. Uh, uh, I, no one. <laughs> I, I've had enough with that. I, I'm completely numb to comments like that now. I, yeah. I, I'm of the mind that. So live streaming has kind of taught me this. The chat is wrong 80% of the time. <laughs> so they'll just say the wrong thing and then you'll be like, like especially you're playing a game they'll be like why don't you just do this you got to do this and it's like okay i'll try that yeah. and it's wrong and it's like okay now now we're here now we've all failed yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that and youtube comments are the same way they just say the wrong thing i are, are you are you wearing sennheiser headphones right now yeah so i have those same headphones i bought them right. 10 years ago 11 years ago they, they cost me a hundred dollars when I get, when I bought them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I put them in a, in my PlayStation five video to, to show, like, I just like using regular headphones. I don't need like the pro gamer headphone or whatever. Are these uh, not like good headphones? No, they're great <laughs> headphones. They're great. Head- oh, right. That's what I'm saying. Like they're good. Uh, they're good. Like, uh, they're good quality audio headphones. Yeah. But, like these like like you know turtle beach headsets the and and the the new like 3d pulse like sony headset they're marketed as gaming headphones so they're supposed to be better because they're specifically for gaming which is dumb <laughs> yeah but i put i put those headphones in the video just that there was just one shot of me hanging them on my my PS, oh no it's five and somebody goes, he's comparing $500 headphones to his Sony Pulse headphones that are $100. And he left that comment on everybody who mentioned my my headphones. He oh thought those were $500 gosh. headphones, is my point. That, oh, mate, we could talk that all evening like, about YouTube comments. I've got this one guy, and, and I, if, he was, if he's watching this, I'm sure he's going to be very happy. But it's this one guy, and every single time... If I say anything like, oh my God, this is absolutely fantastic. I love this. There will be a comment saying, do not use God's name in vain. <laughs> I've got I, a few of those because I say God damn it a lot. But I, it's the same guy. It's the same everything. It's like a macro. It, it's literally like a macro. He's got it. It's there. Do not use God, God's name in vain. You should see some of the shit I edit out. <laughs> of me like Jesus <laughs> I just I like, fail something like I just absolutely reel off all of the swear words and then I say oh my god and please do not use God's name in vain I, it will probably be in the comment of this live stream Pro- yeah probably I, I've had I, I remember specifically one guy leaving a huge paragraph because I said like god damn it like right in the beginning of a video don't uh, use God's name in vain I'm sorry I'm gonna do it don't <laughs> fucking tell me what to do <laughs> <laughs> on your live stream uh, yeah get your own live stream <laughs> um well i was gonna show you this but now i now i don't want to <laughs> wait what well i was gonna show you this but now i don't want to you ever you ever have these eight bit do controllers you don't have uh you don't play around much with the like uh modern consoles and modern controllers and stuff they, no the controllers are like a are like a, a, a big I've, I've used some i've used some i've used some of them um i don't know how many times i just said that but i have used <laughs> some of them and are they making so one of the, those the designer who worked on the ape do controllers you know the ones that look like super nintendo controllers um he did a collaboration with bitboy i think it's bitboy um yeah i think Bit, bitboy is pocket guy or pocket Pocket Go is Bitboy. 
Right. And they're making they're all uh, the same, man. Jeez. I know. They're making an 8 bit do like sort of version of one of these uh portable emulators that looks like it's almost exactly the same as an RG three fifty M. It just looks like uh an eight bit do controller. So you know what you know what my opinion is on on these things? What? My final Let's my hear final it. opinion. Let's hear it. My opinion is that if you want one do a little bit of research. Brandon's website that you're on right now is a great, great source of information. Retro Dodo. Yeah. Buy whichever one you like. Buy whichever one you like the look of. Buy whichever one is within your budget because that one is not going to be a lot different to the other one. Mm-hmm. And if you like it, that is what matters. <laughs> <laughs> and if you think... Oh, actually, I would quite like it to have this here. Give it a month, and there'll be that one. Yeah. But what I want now is easier ways to get the emulators on the consoles. Oh, yeah. Just plug it in and drag and drop the freaking files. I don't understand what's so hard about that. Yeah, I think... When that comes out, I don't even care what types of games it plays. It could stop at Super Nintendo. I don't care. When that happens, I'd be totally happy. And it'll be the, it'll have a new video that says the best portable emulator. (laughs) I just think we're all so, yeah, I, I think everyone's, everyone wants so much from everything. Like, you know, when, if you look on my channel, if I don't know if you've still got it open, Mm -hmm. um, but like my most viewed video Oh, you just showed your analytics there, Bob. I think it's just the reten- it's the reach. It's not a big deal. <laughs> this is the oh. this is the reach of the last video. Yeah, my my uh, my Mr. Beast one looks exactly the same as that. That's good. Yeah. Um, but if you if you click on uh, if you go on my channel real quick, if you scroll down just slightly, um, can you see my most my most viewed? If you go into the next one along popular on my most uploads? popular uploads, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. If you go on the next one along, like. Click on the little arrow to get the next five. Mm-hmm. Yeah, can you see that one there? Unboxing the the twenty dollar mini Game Boy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That was that was back in two thousand and eighteen when these things first started like rolling out, and the whole point of them was that oh my god, look at the one thousand dislikes. Jesus, people were not happy about this. <laughs> the, the the whole point <laughs> about about this was that. They were $20, and you were going to have some fun with them. They were not going to be perfect, but they were $20. And not every, not everyone has $20. I completely understand that, to spend on stuff like this. So this next statement is to be taken with that in mind that I am actually acknowledging that, and I'm not that ignorant. But most people have $20 to gamble on potentially having a lot of fun mm-hmm. you know most people ha- most people would willingly go it's only twenty dollars and they would weigh it up and they would see that this could be quite fun and so that was the whole thing for me when they first started coming out and i think my head is still in that like i want this to be a cheap way to have a lot of fun portably and now they are so complex and there is so much to consider and the, there is the the market is just absolutely oversaturated with so many different things that i don't even know now which the next good which is the good one <laughs> you know there's just so many of them we just need analog to release their goddamn <laughs> handouts that's going to uh, yeah that's going to be game changing for everybody yeah when is that uh april but i don't expect them to hit the mark on that i mean what, i mean they don't usually you... delay stuff but i mean it, yeah i imagine it'd be pretty hard for them to hit uh, so your ideal one is going to just be one that's easier to get software on right yeah, is that, that, that are you that happy with how it. they are no i'm not happy, happy at all they're, they're no, everything besides that like the build and the, the oh yeah i the mean screens and the batteries so, so the first and the... one that i I saw in this video you have the BitBoy. Though that's the first one that I ever got was the BitBoy. Yeah, that was Besides the first like modding, you thing know, I ever got um, by a company. Oh, you got sent it. Huh? Actually, no, I think I got <laughs> sent it too. <laughs> Mate, everyone got sent those. But that was like the first thing I ever got sent by a by a company. It was very exciting. 
So yeah, the first one I got was the BitBoy. Uh, my favorite now is uh, this guy, the the Retroid, which I oh yeah, I for. still haven't. Yeah, I still haven't bought in one of those, but they do look really good. And they they not only do they look like they are actually good, but they look really good. No, they're and there's a lot of cool designs and stuff you can get. I also like the the RG350 just because it's aluminum, but they yeah. have kind of similar internals. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, they play everything fine. I mean, every single one of them plays things slightly differently. Mm -hmm. So, like, uh, this, the Retroid doesn't play N64 games that great. Right. Uh, but some of the other ones do, you know. Um, this one doesn't play have a question for N64 you. games at all. What? What's your question? Why don't you just get a Vita? Oh my god, I hate you so much. <laughs> I know, I know that's what I wanted to do. <laughs> Me and you, we've talked about this. Um, every time we post one of these videos on one of these retro consoles, the comments are just, why don't you just mod a PSP? Or yeah. a DS or something. So that's, a, that's a video idea we want to do. I have that knowledge <laughs> to just do that. Ugh. It's just so funny, and also uh, it's not it's not a cheaper way at all. If anything, it's no. more expensive and also, the convenience. It's nice to have a dedicated portable gaming device, you know. Yeah, and the Vita has the Vita has flaws mm -hmm. that I think are ironed out in some of those later consoles. You know, like I want a bit more girth to my handheld girth. console that I'm about to sit there and play for however many time. And the PSV is like so thin. You're like, hello. <laughs> so yeah. I mean, I mostly see people asking, "Why don't you mod a PSP?" Yeah, but I don't. And that it does. The buttons aren't even like. Yeah, the PSP. It's not even PSP enough. Is, <laughs> yeah. No PS. That is. Yeah, that's terrible. <laughs> that's absolutely awful. You're hearing this sound because I'm trying to search in your comments to see if anybody asked that in this comments of this video oh yeah Look, if i go on my if i go on my analytics on my channel and your type whole in, channel is probably nothing but stuff like that yeah, why don't you see, just thank get you. a ds light and put an r4 in it if i type in mod uh vita i think it's it's oh here we go <clears throat> uh, um to be honest, I would just get a Vita and mod it so it can play any Game Boy, Game Boy Advance game. Uh, would you ever be willing to try a Vita mod? Um, well, at least he was nice about it. Yes. Just get a Vita and mod it. And then it's that face with like the, you know, the eyes, like the, you know, the, it's like the squinting very at you. It's like mad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, you could do that. PSP it's fine to mod a Vita or a PSP, but it's also fine to just spend a couple bucks and get a dedicated device. I mean, especially it's if you don't have a Vita. Just right? do, <laughs> it's fine to do whatever you want, as long as it isn't ups what, hurting anyone. And it's clearly hurting their feelings, but that also, is not your problem. I'm pretty sure Vitas are like really expensive. Look at this. Oh, without, yeah, looking, aren't cheap. without looking, guess how much a, 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 a PlayStation Vita is on Amazon right now. $80. $490. I think that's new, though. I think it's brand new. <laughs> why don't you just mod a Vita? This is why. Well, no, that... that, that it, but look at the prices of those, man. You could buy five of those little handhelds and see which one you like. <laughs> I mean, this must be uh, brand new. Let's go on eBay. Uh... Get PlayStation Vita. Okay, we're, uh, we're it's a lot more reasonable now. One hundred fifty, two hundred, one twenty-five. That's a lot of money. Yeah, no, they're all over a hundred dollars. It's uh, Vitas are are not cheap, even though they're old. Yeah, and also that's the other thing. You know, you're buying what's most likely going to be a secondhand, slightly grubby, dirty one, mm -hmm. and some people like to buy a new one. And if it's a gift. You know, there's loads of things to take into consideration, but I honestly believe that you can just do whatever you want. And as long as you like it, that is all that matters. This is also not including a memory card, and the memory cards are proprietary. 
The problem is that you and I have a weight to provide um, objective opinions. Mm-hmm. You know, we are like expected to be, you know, we are, we, people expect from us. So if we talk about one thing, someone is going to feel entitled to information about another thing. You know, if we talk about one thing that we like, someone isn't going to like that. And then they're going to tell us that they don't like it and that they think we're wrong. And it's, that is just our position. You know, if you were in a pub and you were drinking, you know, a pint and you were talking about handhelds, it's just going to be this like mutual level conversation where everyone's like sharing, sharing their opinions. No one's going to go in that pub unless, and, and usually you wouldn't hang out with those people. No one's going to go, no, actually you're wrong. You are wrong. You should, you should buy a PS Vita. Don't buy that uh, <laughs> RD350. You should buy a PS Vita. You should mod that PS Vita. And that is what you should do. No, who's going to do it, that in a pub? It's, it's you would more, get them to leave. It's a lot more <laughs> aggressive online because there's the a- anonymity and you're behind a screen. Yeah. You could be as aggressive as you want. Nothing's going to happen. I know, but it just cracks me up. Like, person, what, at what point in the face for saying, why don't you <laughs> yeah. buy a PSV? <laughs> at what point did it become um, not about me and my opinion? <laughs> <laughs> like, when did that happen? <laughs> it, it doesn't bother me when people express their opinion next to my opinion or as well as my opinion, or they, or they even snuff out my opinion because their opinion's better. That doesn't bother me. What bothers me is if... I say wrong information or if they say wrong information that really really bothers me sometimes I put Uh, I mean I put out a video and every time I put out a video I go okay what did I get wrong this time and I have to just sit in the comments to just absolutely shit on me I've got a funny one that I get a lot you know I get one that this is I get this a lot right look um I don't see the big deal here this is on a review of a um of a device that was released by Hyperkin to play Game Boy games on your phone. Um, I don't see the big deal here. You seem to be complaining over little things. If you don't like it, then why did you buy it? <laughs> I get I get that a lot. You're nitpicking. It's like, that's my job, dude. That's what I do. <laughs> why are you watching well, Why it? are you buying something that you don't think you're going to like? And why are you pointing out all of the flaws? What do you think this channel <laughs> is for? It's literally my <laughs> goddamn job. Dude. Oh That's why we're God. all here. That is why we are all here. I'm sure you get a lot of just why. <laughs> like yeah. like uh, when you friggin' uh, make the long I just search for why don't you in comments on my whole channel. You should totally <laughs> search that. It's hilarious. Like your long boy video. I'm sure you got a lot of why you do or why would you oh, waste your time mate. doing this? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I had a nice one. Just just to contradict everything we've just said. Here's a nice comment. I don't know why this is in my recommended, but YouTube, you did good. That's that's <laughs> YouTube nice, finally did something. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you for that comment. That's very nice. We do see the nice comments as well. It's just the it's just the mean ones that real hit me in the feels, you know. Also, your Long Boy video, you answered that question right in the title. I made the Game Boy longer for no reason. Oh yeah, but people still wanted a reason. <laughs> <laughs> you also yeah. gave a Game Boy SP, Game Boy Advance SP, an additional screen for no reason. Oh yeah, well it literally was for no reason because it just mimics what you're playing on both screens, so you just see the same thing twice. That so there is really <laughs> no benefit to it. Other than that, you could do it, and that you're you're uh, you're just overwhelmed with power. That was a crazy crazy period of time i've got so many others by the way to (laughs) (laughs) i've got a lot others to do like ones that are in the in the back burner for like ones i've got ideas about what is uh your favorite mod that you've done um what's your favorite mod that you've seen while i think about that i ever or from you because i've i the long boy i was like uh, this is incredible. I don't know why I'm watching this. 
I yeah, the long boy was very funny. I you know what I think I think out of all of them I think out of all of them, the long boy I wouldn't really call that a mod. Although it is a mod, that's it's a modification, a, that's but it's a not thousand like a, percent a mod. It's not a beneficial mod, you know, unless you were to, to if you, unless you had neck strain and you wanted that closer to your face. Um but making the game way longer for no reason was like that was that encapsulates me as a person and my personality more than anything else on my channel. Because it's like, I just like having fun. And I had so much fun making that. When you look at it, you're going to enjoy looking at it unless you're one of those people who goes, why did you destroy two Game Boys? So I mentioned in the video, I used faulty Game Boys for the whole thing. I used old shells that were all yellow. The screen is completely irreversible. There's nothing in there that's permanent. And still, people are like... Oh, anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, that one was definitely one of the, one of the I, ones. I, I was I, thinking about auctioning I, I that mind, off. One. I don't mind people who, like, you know, cannibalize Game Boys to make them better. Like these Game Boy mods, when you put a new shell on it and stuff, you put the IPS screen on it and whatever. And I think you made it better by making it longer because it's funny and it's, a, it's like a work of art. Um, I it bothers me like the uh, people when the switch first came out, people were taking uh, uh, game cubes and they were cutting the, the middle of them and putting the switch dock into it. And that really oh, yeah. bothered me. That made me very mad. And a lot of I used to get caught. Why don't you do this? Why don't you talk about this? And it's like, I don't want to. I think that that's sad. You're ruining a game cube for. I think no reason. I guess it just depends, though, like if the game cube, uh, you know, I guess it is. It, it just does depend, doesn't it? You know, if the GameCube was maybe faulty or um, True. or if maybe they're going to use the spares for other things. Um, I don't know. I, I think, yeah, I, I think that's okay. The, the, yeah, I think that's probably okay if, depending on the context. But if everyone all of a sudden starts going out and buy, buying GameCubes, ripping out the insides, dumping the insides, and then all cutting up all the shells, that is sacrilege. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I also have a special appreciation for... This uh, podcast turned into what bothers us. <laughs> yes, it's just us complaining the whole time, like old men. I have a special appreciation for the video where you uh, play uh, uh, PS5 on your Game Boy Advance. Is that on your second oh. channel? No, that was on the main channel. I can't, I can't find it. Uh, uh, I think what? it was just called I played PS5 on the Game Boy Micro. Oh, micro. I was looking for yeah. a, a regular Game Boy Advance. I'm I did actually play it on the dual screen SP. Oh my God. Which was fun. <laughs> yeah, that was really fun. I just like having fun, you know? That's what I like doing. You know, you're like, I, I look at your channel, and every what video I watch of yours, I feel worse about myself. <laughs> <laughs> because Why? your videos are so good. You know, like, for example, I recently don't, watched your. Don't gas um, me up. This isn't the. This isn't the platform for that. <laughs> you have to the, shit on me like the chat does. Nah, it's it's okay to give, recognize your your achievements. Your your videos are just so good. Like, I I know for, from for your perspective, you're seeing the entire process of it, and you're not going to think that it's anything anything special because you've seen it from start to finish. But when a consumer is sitting there. In like going through the process of watching one of your videos, it is a very nice experience, you know. And the, the weirdest classic console, the Game and Watch Mini that you did, the whole thing, you know, doesn't the video start off and you play a bit of the old advert? Yeah, it does. Like, it's just so good. And <laughs> I cannot compete with that because I don't have that professionalism to my mind. You know, I'm just here to hopefully entertain people by how you're, you're, stupid i am <laughs> you're, you're you're selling yourself short here you're, you're you're looking at the production quality that yeah uh, but it's not just that it's the it's the actual ability to i've been playing with this little ball on my desk the whole time i'm sorry i'm gonna put it down it's the ability <laughs> to um to create a story you know it's it's the it's not about the production because if your camera quality was crap i would still be saying the same thing it's it's the ability to create a story which is a, which is an actual in my opinion um talent 
Do you think you, know, you they can't don't you can't do learn that? that easily? Do you I think, think I don't? Yeah, you absolutely do that. Do you think that you don't do that? No, not in the same way that you do. Oh, not you, in the you, same you, way that you, you do at you all. Definitely, you definitely do. You definitely. No, I don't mean that my videos aren't good. I'm not saying that my <laughs> videos are bad by comparison. I'm just saying that we are very different channels. Yes. You know, you're, no, you're I, I agree with that. Of... But, but but your story and your videos is like uh, you know your personal experience of what you have and and your uh, your journey through your process with whatever wacky creation you're doing or whatever 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 weird retro thing you have like the like the uh another one of my favorite videos of yours the game boy test cartridge oh i like these weird like uh like i like your mods but i also like just looking at like weird retro products that existed once upon a time you know, I was having this conversation with Nick Robinson. Did you did you ever watch any of his um, yes. videos about the lost McDonald's start? Yeah, I didn't so I was having. That one, oh, you didn't watch it? I didn't watch that specific one. Oh, you should watch it. It's great. Um, the Nintendo made a DS with one screen. So I found this product on um, on Sendico, which is like Yahoo Yahoo auctions, and it was a Nintendo DS that had one screen that had one function and it turns out like it had one intended function but it turns out it could do a lot more than just what it was intended for but because it was only intended for that one function and it wasn't released to the public no one really knew that anyone anything else could be done with it so i was talking to him about the fact that in my video i was kind of going through that experience with the audience you know there was very little knowledge that i had prior to starting that video because i that is the way that i do my videos it's like we learn about it together you see my reaction i make hopefully some um remarks on it which are f funny and and then we and then yeah whereas someone else like you or like izzy or um kevin kenson or um uh spawn wave oh god i'm not yeah, like those sorts of people. It's like this really well thought out, like scripted, <laughs> structured thing. And then you compare it to mine where I'm sat there and I get stuff wrong. And, you know, I'm like, I'll say stuff like, um, I, oh, it has three of those, I think. Does it have three? I think it's three. You know, I'll say, and you've n I've never heard you go, it has two of those. I think it's two. Double check me on that, everyone. I think that's two. <laughs> Is that two? I think we're a lot more the same than you think because I I like to think that too. That I it's my journey through figuring out what something does or how good it is or whatever. But I I write it. You know, I I write a script with all yeah. like uh my key points, and then in that writing process, I go, does it have two doohickeys or just or three and then i look it up and then i go okay well but i still yeah, get yeah. things wrong all the time and then the comments rip me in half it's fun though it's good to have variation and i think as long as people remember that that um we are also just having fun and we are also learning and that we although we may you may have like 500 half a million subscribers or whatever that you're not perfect and no one's perfect and you're going to make mistakes you're going to learn as you go these and channels just are just kind of our have... journey through yeah we're all kind of trying to have fun whatever. you know it's, it's just it's, so if if you don't like the video or our opinion or whatever then there's plenty of other people on youtube that will better align with your with your but that's know, great about thoughts. youtube and that's also what's bad about youtube is like what's great about youtube is that if you like a creator, you watch them, you enjoy them, you've got you're gonna have so many loyal viewers that without you seeing it in in person, they're having conversations with their friends going, Yeah, I watched this guy called Bob Wolf, and you have no idea that that even happens and that even goes on. And they love you and your personality. And and then the downside of YouTube is that if someone's looking for some information and they search for what's your latest video called? Um I don't even I couldn't even tell you. It was about a controller thing, wasn't it? Yeah, a little. Uh, what is? It? I have it right here. Uh, um, yeah, upgrade, upgrade your, your Switch, Switch Pro, Pro controller. Yeah. To play so if they you. search into YouTube or Google, I want to upgrade my Switch Pro controller, and then they click on your channel, and then they see something they don't like, they're not going to take into consideration the fact that 
other people do like that certain thing or that certain style or you like doing it in that way and that's just the way the, the that's just the way the world works that's the way the cookie crumbles like that's just it is called youtube and broadcast yourself was their slogan and uh yeah we're all just trying to have fun yeah that's God's got deep. <laughs> 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 I, yeah there's 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 somebody for i mean people also don't realize like uh this is a whole niche and it's like uh, it's our jobs to talk about these fun little like toys i love basically. the way americans say that word niche yeah isn't that the british way of saying it no <laughs> <laughs> it's niche yeah, <laughs> I get I get shit every time I say niche. But if you go on, but if you go on Google and you type it in, it has both pronunciations. I print. I don't know if you know this about me, but I pronounce things wrong all the time, and I get. Do you know what I do? Do you know what I do? If I'm going to talk about Mario in the same video, I will pronounce it Mario. Oh, so I would it up. like. Oh yeah, I switch it up. Yeah. Do you really get called out for saying Mario? Yeah, you get called out for saying Mario, don't you? Uh, no, I get called out for saying Mario. For saying it just like you say it. But you it's should get a pass on. because you have a British accent. And everybody with that accent says it like that. I love YouTube. It's so <laughs> fun. I'm definitely not going mental. Oh, on, so on, in America, only people are in New York or on Long Island say Mario. And that's where I grew up. So that's where uh, that's why I say Mario. I've always said Mario, and I always used to say Yoshi, but apparently it's Yoshi. Wait, wait. You've always said, what? Mario or Mario? I always said Mario. Oh, okay. That's how Growing up, I always said Mario, and then I was told that it's Mario. I I mean, a lot of British people say Mario. But I've always said Mario. So everyone in Britain is telling you to say Mario. Mario and have, have you got the sweets? Have you got these sweets? Hang on, L- let me spell them out. M, wait, on. hang on, let me just. I don't even know how to spell them. Oh, I know how to spell them. M A O A M. Have you got those sweets, those candy in America? Wow, I would never, <laughs> we don't, but I don't have any idea how to pronounce this. Okay, we'll try, try it from a phonetic mouth. Yeah, yeah. Maoam. Yeah, Maoam. That is apparently Mal-am. how you say it. Okay. But for some reason, when I grew up, I always called them Moams. That's just wrong. <laughs> yeah, that is it's definitely wrong. <laughs> and then the other thing as well is... Um, I mean, I used to call Ryu from Street Fighter Ryu. Have you have you got C-A-L-I-P-P-O? C... Well, yeah, say that again. C-A-L-I-P-P-O. No. Okay, that is like a an ice lolly, Cal- um, or a popsicle. I think. I think Cal- Calipo. Yeah. So I always called it um, a calipo. I might. But it's have, actually I might have calipo. I might have done that too. It's actually calipo, and it's like there's all these things, and it's just like <laughs> as long, ah! as long as people <laughs> understand what you're saying, I don't see the problem. <laughs> you know? No, mate. I don't know. If I hear you talking about Mario, I'm like, what is he on about? <laughs> <laughs> what is this video about? <laughs> I saw the title and I read Mario, and then he starts talking about Mario. He starts what saying you like that? an asshole. I'm done with this channel. <laughs> it's just this sound that comes out that I didn't even know humans could make, and I I just can't register what's going on. I have some videos where I'm gonna I, say, a comment. <laughs> I have some videos where I say niche and I put the Google voice like woman saying it over me just so people will shut up. <laughs> but they don't. They still comment. It's brilliant. Anyway, Elliot, we've been we've been at this for an hour. We're we're that's it. We're wrapped up. Sorry, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> why, why are you apologizing? Did that, did that go well? Did I do all right? It went great. You are the second guest we've ever had. The first guest doesn't really count. He's here all the time. Oh, well, so you're like really it's an absolute honor. Guest. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm, we I have a talk a, on a your channel. Fan. What? We have a talk on your channel from a little while ago. We have. Is that on your second channel? That is on my second channel. Yeah, I did a whole series where I went through and... Um, and just spoke to my friends and stuff. But you've uh, you've always been very, very good to me with um, 
with putting me on your channel and and crediting my channel and i remember like the christmas video that you did last year mm-hmm. was that last year yes i'm trying to find it it was yeah it was last year everybody's asking me if i'm doing that again and i'm not because that was a pain in the ass <laughs> yeah um and i remember like having this quite pinnacle moment in the video and i remember watching that and going I was like absolutely fanboying. I was like, oh my God, that's insane. Like I'm on the screen with you in the back. And I was just, it was just amazing. So yeah. <laughs> thank you, Bob. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh, obviously, youtube.com slash the retro future. If anybody wants to look at the rest of your stuff, if you don't already know, you should already know. It's great. Everybody who watches me would very much appreciate your channel. Um, anyway, uh, goodbye and back to you, Bob from the future. Hello, Bob from the future. Hello. Thank you, past Elliot and Bob. Hey, I'm back and I'm no longer British. British? Governor. <laughs> Moam. Uh, Cal- Calipo. I, lo- uh, I love to have me a Calipo. Sh- Shrimp on the Barbie. Did that end abruptly? It looked like it. I thought I like waved or something. Anyway, um, so that way he ain't he great? Isn't he great? He seems Elliot. like a nice bloke. Uh, I see. Ah, I get it. Yeah. Uh, we got a Twitch Prime from Tenza Zangetsu. We got. Far it art with two hundo bits, and we got Violet Sprite with a whole bunch of gift subs. Five of them. I very much appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yeah. Wait, that wasn't live. Oh, we tricked you. Yeah, got gotcha. you. That's that's what we do here. We dupe our audiences. <laughs> Most people who watch this show don't watch it live, so yeah. <laughs> Sorry about it. Um, Darth Fat Nuts. Thank you for the prime sub. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, uh, I was glad to have that talk. I like sitting down and talk with him. I uh, sometimes, sometimes I just chat with him in Discord. He's like one of the few people I do that with, other than people that I talk to on streams, like AJ and you know, yeah, E and E and whatnot. Uh. All right. Well, we got more things we can plow through. This is only yes, the halfway we have a, point of the podcast. We have an actual show to get through. <laughs> yes. Uh, one of the big topics we got here is uh, the Switch development leaks. So there's been some some leakage mm-hmm. on uh, how the Switch development has uh, was when it first well, the, the, the when the first, when the Switch was just a little baby when it was when it when it was just, but a when wee it, lad when it was a, a glimmer in his father's eye <laughs> and, and Miyamoto's sack yeah. Uh, this is from Video Games Chronicle. Nintendo has reportedly suffered another major data leak, and now, uh, oh, now related to the Switch this time. Uh, so here we go. Like several other prominent Nintendo leaks, which occurred this year, the latest uh, data dump first emerged on the 4chan forum and reportedly contained files related to the development of Switch, including a 2015 SDK and document related to its security. However, according to Nintendo historian Forest of Illusion, early indications are that the security methods detailed in the leak are not directly relevant to the final machine, which potentially makes the new breach far less damaging than it could have been for the platform holder. According to the historian, the data includes a look at an early prototype for a Switch from 2014 featuring an all-screen design. Now, this image might look familiar if you've been around here for a while. It, it sure does, actually. This looks very similar to the faked leak of uh, the, the, the 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 hoax of what the switch was going to look like right um force of illusion tweeted nintendo won't be happy more stuff leaked just now switch private keys and many documents one document reveals the switch's design in 2014 and it is eerily similar to the one hoax that was floating around and got traction years back now 
the reason this looks similar to the hoax is because there was a Nintendo patent that looked similar to this. Yes. So the hoax was just copying what one of Nintendo's patents was. And mm -hmm. this is uh this is just a different version of that patent with an actual picture of a prototype, which is something we've never seen before. We've never seen an actual picture of a prototype. Um however uh, this looks terrible. I would hate this. I'm yeah, so I don't with think what we got the, the whole all screen design because like half of the screen is taken up by uh, the analog sticks. <laughs> yeah, that's like a waste of space. I like how they put Splatoon yeah. on there. That's pretty cute. Also, judging from the prototype, the analog sticks is like right in the middle of it. So where would they put like the face buttons? You don't got them. Well, this yeah. is Nintendo. Uh, they don't care. Get rid yeah. of some buttons. We'll figure out how to make the games play that way. <laughs> and then they're like, now nah, we got to put back all the buttons, guys. I wonder if it has a bunch of buttons on the back, maybe. You know? I, it looks like it has shoulder buttons. Yeah, well, it's, I mean, please. It's got to at least yeah. have that. But it could have maybe some more bumpers and stuff. Mm -hmm. Or or like a touch back, like a like the Vita has or something. Yeah. Um, Can I find the old prototype uh nintendo nx patent yep there it is this is it with this little freaking guy oh yeah I yep and then we got this uh what about nintendo nx leak Yeah, so this is this was the leak. This this was what everybody. This was the hoax. This is a hoax. This was not yeah, real. That's that's what it, the one I remember. This came about because of what this looked like. And well, now, wasn't there a version? There was a version of the hoax mock-up that had like an image on it, right? Or did, am I making that up? I think you're making that up. There's okay. there's all other people have done it. Oh wait, there was this one. This right. one I remember. This one. Yeah, this, that's the one I'm thinking of. Okay. Yeah, this is also wrong. Yeah. Um so yeah, now we've we've seen now we get a little clearer look at what that would have looked like and I'm so happy that we did not get that. Yep. Uh anyway, there's more. Another Twitter user, Caitlin Molinas, uh has summarized the data allegedly contained within the leak according to uh can we pronounce this correctly? Molina, M Molinas. Mol uh, listen, I was listening to a British uh, talk for an hour. Molinas. Yeah, I think I think Molinas. it's Molinas. Documents detailing an early prototype for Nintendo Switch indicate that the console was to be far less powerful than the final design, with either one or two screens captured at 480p resolution. That would have been terrible. I would have been very upset. This early prototype was much closer to the Nintendo 3DS in design, which with support for 3D video and backwards compatibility, as well as street pass, spot pass, and pedometer features. According to Molina's uh, summary or of the leaked documents, this device would be able to broadcast video through Miracast, meaning that potentially this concept would be for a portable console that does not dock into a TV, instead displaying video to a TV wirelessly while still having the unit usable, similar to the Wii U's gamepad. Uh, that was uh, that was uh, speculated. Like when yeah. before we knew what the NX was, that was one of the things that was considered. Yeah. It was uh, that or that there would be like a hockey puck device that you would plug into your TV and it would beam to that. Like a Chromecast because we knew it was Android based or it was potentially right. Android based. Right, right. Um, the data leak is also said to offer insight into how Nintendo attempted to hire a hacker from the 3DS homebrew scene, <laughs> going so far as to assemble a PR plan for how to deal with public relations if it discovered the hiring. According to Twitter summaries of the leaked document, Nintendo kept detailed data on the 3DS hacker in question and even formulated a plan to convince him to join the company, including including by flying him to Japan to meet its engineering team. Oh, my God. Jeez. 
Uh, this is a tweet from Caitlin. It says, Nintendo apparently really, really wanted this guy. This is so funny. And I guess this is a Discord message. Yeah. In the medium term, uh, organizing a trip to Japan to meet NCL's hardware engineers may also represent a very attractive opportunity for the hacker who is a young, independent, and ambitious hardware engineer. That's actually pretty cool of Nintendo. <laughs> Like, we always crap on Nintendo because there's other companies like Sega who's like, you know, people make fan games and Sega's like, hire that man. Yeah. And we always like, Nintendo would never do something like that. And here they are doing something like that. But the reason you don't hear about it is because of things like this. Yeah. Nintendo has a specific PR plan for if the public finds out that they hired a hacker from the homebrew scene. I don't really get this flow chart. Do you get this? Uh, Hold on. Let me just try to expand it. Negative PR averted. We may get backlash from hackers averted. Cyber attack to Nintendo leak of personal info averted. May accelerate hacking activity averted. Hacking community may go underground averted. Potential risk when we hire any hackers mitigated. I don't get that. Yeah, it's that's just saying it's not saying how you're averting them. <laughs> right. None of these things happen, so why were they marked averted, says Octennis. Yeah, that's I don't get it. Yeah. It's, it sounds like there's a bullet point before this that we're missing. Because she mm -hmm. says that they had a plan. And this doesn't lay out a plan. This just says what would happen. Um, Apparently, Nemod from the 3DS hacking scene worked with Nintendo to, expand, to explain his 3DS exploits and analyze possible solutions. And Nintendo... Oh, so like a security... Uh, consultant. Yeah. And Nintendo went as far as planning to hire him, attempting to curry favor by giving prototypes and cool hardware samples. Cool. That's actually, that's pretty cool. Uh, the Smealum hack and what to do about it. Oh, this is like an internal document about what they wanted to do about the hack. Oh my god, they have a picture so. of the guy in in the PowerPoint. <laughs> they were going to make him sign an NDA. I wonder how yeah. that went. I would like to hear from that guy. Then there's other stuff like uh, some DS stuff. We have a, now a bunch of uh, MP3 sounds from Mario General Games. Okay, none of this is important. Switch development units... It, is shown in some pictures dated 2013. This, the name Switch was then used in another file dated 2014. We now know the, the Switch console was there back in 2013. And then we have... Wow, there's a lot of crap here. We got this monstrosity. It looks like a freaking cable box. <laughs> oh, wow. That actually looks like the, a Switch from the front. I don't know what... Yeah. I don't know if this is one of the ones that's dated 2013, but that looks like a freaking Switch. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, that looks close to final, or at least like a dev kit. Oh, it's definitely a dev kit, because uh, look at the back. But yeah. the front, the design of the screen looks the same. That's wild. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I think that's pretty much it. Um, okay. So we get a new look at some of the development of the Nintendo Switch which is pretty mm -hmm. cool. We like seeing a little bit of gaming history here. I wish someone would make like a documentary on that, but Nintendo would never let them. It would have to be uh, very much unauthorized. Yes. Uh, we got Edrew with four months of Prime subs. Thank you. And we got Ghost of Gordy with 100 bits. Will, this is for your phonetically spelling aluminium. Aluminium accent. That's just Thank not you. correct. There's an extra syllable in there. There's, they throw an I at the end. Alu Aluminium. Aluminium. Yeah, they do. Yeah, alumini aluminium. Yeah. But there's no I there. It's al aluminum. <laughs> well, they also spell like color and harbor with a U. And we don't. You're right. So. You're right. 
we we want to get to the point you know we want to yeah cut out the middleman which is the u yeah the correct spelling is aluminium bob is that correct is that oh yeah that is a spelling yeah oh wait oh they're both correct oh so <laughs> in in english it's spelt aluminum that's why we right. say it like that i didn't know that that, ex that explains everything that then then they're both right also gray versus gray i still don't know which one's which i, sw I swip swap all the time i think they're both acceptable yeah yeah um they also use the c word a lot no that's australians no Brit the brits do too uh -huh. yeah anyway uh hey look at this new ganky thing Oh boy, Bob loves Genki. I don't know why everybody loves this company so much. That I, I, the marketing is so is good because they convinced everybody that they were the only people in the world who can make a switch dock that's not going to break your switch. Yeah. Uh, this looks really cool though. This thing. Uh, I don't see how in the world they could get it to not have any latency. They don't really talk about the latency at all because yeah, even capture cards that are wired have latency so and also stuff like this on a mac just doesn't work good just so never well let's ex let's explain what this is all right you you explain what it is all right so the genki shadow cast for the nintendo switch and the playstation 5 the simplest way to play console games on your computer no internet connection or tv needed play anywhere you want uh so Basically, this is a little dongle. It's an HDMI dongle that you plug into the HDMI port of, let's say, the Switch. And then through USB-C, uh, you connect it to an external monitor uh, to play games on a laptop or a computer screen. So it, they say Nintendo Switch and PlayStation 5, but really it's for any HDMI device. Well, see... I oh. think the reason why they said, well, this is this is conspiracy theory on my part here, but I think the reason why they only say those two systems is because I'm I'm guessing the Xbox Series X has some weird HDCP or the uh, weird proprietary HDMI signal that doesn't play well with things like this. Because my Xbox One uh, doesn't play nice with HDMI switchers, and that's like a known thing with Xbox Ones. Um, so it does. Being, it does not. The, what? Um, it does not have anything like that. The original Xbox One, maybe. But well, I have. I'm I'm using the One S, and it was getting screwed up with my switcher up here. That's a that's a weird switcher thing. I because my PS5 also has problems with my switcher. Yeah. Um. It, it it's. Uh, it could also be a resolution thing. If anything, the P PlayStation Five has HDCP. It has weird HDCP stuff. So yeah. that would be the harder one to 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 do this with. Um. I'm I'm imagining this is only 1080p. Or even lower than that, maybe. Well, the, I don't yeah. think the PlayStation Five could even get lower than that. Uh, it also comes with a uh, video capture support. You can capture video from your system directly to your computer. Uh, and this thing called a camera hack, which I'm not really sure what that means. That is, uh, it can mimic. It could. It can mimic a webcam. So, like ah. what I'm doing right now for you in Discord, like you're seeing the OBS yeah. screen. Uh, you can yeah. stream your gameplay through a Zoom call if you want. You can just make it your webcam. Okay. Which all sounds really cool. This is this sounds like a really cool device. I just can't imagine yeah. it working like, <laughs> at all. <laughs> like, because again, like even the Elgados, which are built for this and are wired, uh, still have a little bit of latency. Like I wouldn't want to yeah. play through the capture software. I would I would only want to play on a TV. That's then looped through the capture software. Um, yeah. So it's weird to me that uh, 
this is wireless and going to the MacBook and you are just playing it on there. That's that I I'm very skeptical well, of that. It's not it's because you still have to connect it to your MacBook through a USB C cable. Right. So it's not truly wireless. Wait. I don't think it's wireless at all. I don't know where you're getting wireless from. You know where I'm getting wireless from, Will? Where are you getting wireless from? It says Shadow Cast. That's it. <laughs> That's it. It's not wireless at all. So it's just because it says cast in the. Yep. Mm hmm. Yeah, scroll and, if you scroll down the, to how it works, it, it looks like it looks like a friggin' dongle. Yeah. Well, if you all the way if you scroll down to how it works, step one, connect its USB C cable to the computer. Yes. Step two, insert the shadow cast to the game console. Step three, launch the Genki arcade app on your computer. I hope that app is good. That's the one <laughs> thing holding Elgato back from from yeah. being good on MacBooks. So this is just a capture card, dude. There's nothing special about this at all. Basically, yeah. So, but it's yeah. a really small capture card. That is cool. Oh, they they compare it to an Elgato, and it's cheap. It's only forty yeah. bucks. That's pretty cool. I think the big thing is this just goes directly to your computer with no extra like device and stuff. Because with capture cards, you gotta you know usually pass through it. So you connect so, the console to the capture card, and then the capture card to your monitor. This is just directly to your monitor. So. Yes, but you are supposed to be able to use an HD 60 S plus or S on your MacBook with little latency. Right. Uh, the reason you have it pass through is because there's always going to be latency on the computer. Mm -hmm. So the pass through is more a feature than it is like a like a like a like a fault. Right. So the fact that this does not have pass through is concerning. But it's only forty bucks. That's that's kind of cool. Yeah. I, if you're playing freaking Animal Crossing or Pokemon or something, you're probably not gonna miss having that pass through. So this would be a cool thing to be able to get your games on the on the MacBook or on a laptop or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd still probably suggest Elgato's stuff because it runs better. But I mean, that's a lot more money. Yeah. That's what like eight times the price. Can't mm -hmm. do math. Don't ask me to do math. Okay, there's literally capture cards like this for twenty bucks on Amazon. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they don't probably, buy those. They probably don't have uh any software or anything. They probably just show up as a webcam, you know. Yeah. No bells and whistles. Simple HDMI capture card latency to the computer and latency on Twitch. So is the latency really an issue if you're just streaming them? I mean it. You're getting this thing to play the game on your computer. Um, I mean, sure, you can stream to Twitch too, but uh, mm -hmm. I think the main selling point is just to play this, play your games on the computer. And uh, at at that point, there's going to be latency. I just don't know how much there is going to be. We'll have to see. This also shows up as a webcam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we 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 read through that. Yeah, what it does, according to Gizmodo, what it does is it takes the HDMI signal, converts it uh, to be carried over via USB-C and be displayed on a laptop screen or a monitor uh, through a desktop PC using Genki's proprietary app. Uh, it can accept 4K video signal, but it only... Uh, it accepts 4K video signal in, but it only outputs um, 1080p 30 or 720p 60. Ooh, that's not that's that's yeah. bad. But I mean, well, okay, it's only forty dollars. I have to keep reminding myself. It's only forty dollars. It's tiny. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's it. I'm trying to see what else goes USB C to the computer. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's basically it. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, uh, they're they're like pitching it as an add-on to their their covert dock because that's also really tiny. Yeah, uh, f they had a Kickstarter goal of thirty thousand dollars. It has already blown past that Jesus tenfold. Christ. 
Uh, so this will get funded. If you would like to back it, uh, it's $35 to get the shadow cast. That's the holiday special. Otherwise Fine. it'll go up to 40 bucks. <laughs> Fine. I'll do it now. Oh boy. Expect your video. Um, you what? never reviewed the, uh, their covert kit, right? No, because I talked about it in one of my videos where everybody was like, you try this one out because it's the only one that blah, blah, blah. And I, uh, they, the guy, the guy who designed it made a Reddit post talking about why yeah. it's the only one that's going to be good. And in the Reddit post, he talks about how it's going to be good because it's USP, it's USB PD compliant but the switch isn't USB PD compliant. So there's, so your, your logic is flawed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honestly, if it's USB PD compliant, it's probably fine, but it's still not what the switch is. So you're still safer yeah. with a switch dock. I promised I would, I wouldn't get, I, I promise I wouldn't uh, put the badge back on and go back into this fight. Well, <laughs> well, Sometimes the old Ronin has to suit up for one more fight. <sighs> anyway, um, is this my right credit card? Yeah. The shipping is four dollars, so it's it's still costing forty dollars anyway. Right. There you go. I I did it. Now I don't have to talk so to them. Awkwardly. That's less than I had to, than the shipping for the spawn figure that I still haven't gotten yet. <laughs> It's supposed to be coming this month. <laughs> How quickly can we plow through uh, cyberpunk stuff? Uh, I guess the real quick way is Sony is not only accepting refunds, like they've expanded their refund policy uh, for cyberpunk to the point where they just took it off the store. <laughs> like you cannot, you cannot buy cyberpunk digitally yep. on the PlayStation four right now. If you want it, you have to go to an actual physical store and buy it. Um, Cyberpunk said, uh, CD Projekt Red basically said, yeah, they did that. Uh, we don't blame them. We're working on fixing it and whatnot. Uh, and then Microsoft came out and said, uh, we we're also, uh, not that they're expanding their refund policy, but they're making special note of Cyberpunk specifically. Um, and not only that, if you go... So Cyberpunk is still available on the Xbox Live Marketplace, but if you go to buy it from the Xbox Live, uh, a warning sign will come up and say, hey, this game is buggy AF. Are you <laughs> sure you want to buy it? Um, so this kind of is looks bad for uh, certification for these yes. stores because like they should have denied certification for these for this game they should have said hey this game's not ready we can't certify it for our stores but mm -hmm. imagine being in playstation or, or microsoft's uh uh position this game is so like anticipated so highly anticipated uh and you're gonna be the one you're gonna be the one console to be like no it's not ready you would yeah you would look like the bad guy so the only move that they had was for the game to come out be buggy and crappy and then backtrack because they don't look like bad guys right now. Well, I think what happened was CD Projekt Red said, if, you, if you're if you dissatisfied, ask for a refund from Sony or Microsoft with the implica implication that they were making special dispensation for this one game. And neither store was doing that. Uh, and Sony in particular, has a very strict refund policy when it comes to getting refunds from the PlayStation Network. So Sony, I guess, in an act of screw you to CD Projekt Red, was like, all right, we'll expand our refund policy for this game, but we'll also have to take it off the store if it's that bad. So th I, that looks like that's what they did. Someone in chat was complaining about Ricky Berwick on screen, mm -hmm. so I just pulled up a Ricky Berwick video and I'm playing it on screen right now. There just, you go. Just to fuck with him. Um, it's Ricky Berwick, dude. Yeah, uh, man. Get get with it, dude. Um, yeah, again, I don't blame them for taking it off the store. Yeah. And, and and yeah, I, I I I did. So I listened to that a little bit of that investor call that they had, and apparently they yeah. they then 
after all, you know, hell broke loose, they talked to uh, Sony and Microsoft. And, uh, but I think that was already after they put up the thing saying they were going to do refunds. Yeah. So I think they did this and then Sony and Microsoft were like, well, I guess we got to do refunds. Yeah. Well, you know, like I said, Microsoft has a much less strict refund policy than Sony does. I've gotten refunds for stuff um, that I bought on Xbox Live. It's fairly painless. You just have to know where to go to do it. Um, but yeah, I think it was, which is weird because there are games and I, and I tweeted about this. There are games on the PlayStation Network that are far more broken than Cyberpunk was. Mm -hmm. But I think because Cyberpunk uh, was a much bigger deal and kind of forced Sony's hand. They really had no choice but to take it down. I, I think, uh, yeah, the fact that it's a bigger deal is yeah. really important. Because um, there's going to be a, a wider net of people who are going to be upset that they got it. Yeah. But also, some of the bugs are game-breaking. Like, you can't play the yeah. game. Like, it stops you from playing the game. And I know, uh, Mike, I think part of the reason why Microsoft isn't doing a full takedown of it is because they had a lot of marketing money put into Cyberpunk. The game was revealed on their E3 stage. That's true. They made a, an Xbox One X modeled after Cyberpunk. There was a Cyberpunk edition Xbox One X that came out. Um, so they're kind of like just sticking with it, I guess, because they have to. Yeah. Um, but good on everybody for giving refunds, you know? Yeah. Uh, I, again, I only played a little bit of it, and I haven't had uh, any game-breaking bugs. Anything really that, like, made me really mad. Like, you did. You had a lot yeah. of problems. I had a lot of problems to the point where I've actually stopped playing the game, and I'm going to come back to it after the first major patch to see how it turns out mm -hmm. just because it was becoming it was actually hindering my experience in addition to like some of like general game design choices that i don't necessarily agree with i think i would have been able to get beyond that if let's say if i pulled out my machine gun the textures didn't start glitching out mm -hmm. or if i press the crouch button i crouched instead of kept walking yeah you, you, know? you have input delay and stuff which is yeah a problem i just I, well, you're playing on a 1S. I'm playing 1S. on a Series X. So mm -hmm. I have a lot more power going in there. Um, my only problem are like dumb little UI decisions. So it's yeah. it's really like, I don't, I can't speak to how broken the game is. I just think that the game is like, okay, you know, as far as yeah. I've played. But I hate saying that and because we, it's not my type of game anyway. I mean, I was like kind of getting into it. I kind I was like, I like the world. I like the ideas up behind it and things like that. It made me want to go back and watch both Blade Runner movies again, <laughs> uh, just because I really like the aesthetic. But you know, I wasn't enjoying myself, and a big part of that was because it was buggy and kind of janky. So, so the moral of the story is: uh, don't get this game unless you really, uh, unless you have a next gen console and you really, really are going to love it. Yeah. Uh, a hundred percent weight. Uh, keep keep an ear out on review sites and uh, user feedback and stuff. Uh, and let this be a lesson: never, ever, 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 ever pre-order. Yes, ever. Not even once, unless it's hardware. Yeah, and even then, be wary. Yes, there's a there's a Cyberpunk Xbox One X out in the world right now. Yeah. All right. Well, tell me about this Doug Bowser interview. So Doug Bowser gave a big ass interview over at Polygon. It was a very long interview. I see that. Um, and it went through a lot of stuff. Um, Jesus Christ. I, so I have just a couple of the highlights of it and his like key points. Um, I want to preface this by saying that he gives like very long answers and they are the most corporate speak <laughs> answers like he will go around in circles and uh not dancing around the issue but like 
talking about it without actually answering your question. Yeah. Um, so the big things. Uh, on Nintendo Switch Online and whether Xbox Game Pass could come to the Switch. That's what I scrolled uh, right to. I scrolled right to that one. So in summary, Doug Bowser says, we are always looking at various ways that we can engage our consumers right now. We have... We have found that our catalog and the third-party publishing catalog that's available, whether that's through Nintendo Switch Online or through frontline game purchases, has really been allowing us to do that. That's what he says about is Game Pass coming to the Switch. So that's not... He doesn't say anything. That's not, that's just, he's answering exactly. a different that's, question. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. That's so dumb. Like, I, he like completely like goes around the topic to, to, he like bombards you with corporate speak until you forget what you asked him about. Sorry, just to confirm by that way, you mean purchasing games individually? Exactly. Purchasing games individually. But we also recognize that there are consumers who want to have access to other parts of our back catalog. Like, okay, that's a different question. We're not talking about that. We're talking about friggin' Microsoft games. Yeah. Uh, I know that people have asked and spoken to Microsoft regarding the idea of something like Game Pass even appearing on the Switch. Is that something that you're ever considering? He really pushed on this. Yeah. The way I would answer that, Russ, is we are always looking at various ways that we can engage our consumers right now. We have found that our catalog and the third-party publishing catalog that's available, whether that's through Nintendo Switch Online or through frontline game purchases, has really yeah, been that's allowed what us I, to do that. Yeah. All right. Well, that's the, the All right. he tried. He tried really hard. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next, why certain games are being removed from the eShop after March thirty first, twenty twenty one. So in case you don't know, Super Mario 3D All-Stars, um, the the Fire Emblem game, the original Fire Emblem game, uh, those are coming down off the Switch uh, eShop on March 31st, 2021. Uh, and the Game & Watch Super Mario Brothers will also no longer be available after March tw- 31st, 2021. Doug Bowser says, yeah, I think I use a simple word, celebration. It's just, this is a celebration of Mario's 35th anniversary, and we wanted to celebrate in a unique and different way, and we've done that through games like Super Mario 3D All-Stars, or we will be doing that through future releases, such as Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury. And then and then we've also done it through the release of Game & Watch, Super Mario Brothers, or through Mario Kart Live Home Circuit. There are various ways that we are celebrating Mario's 35th anniversary. And with some of these titles, we feel we felt it was appropriate to release them for a limited period of time. They've done very, very well. Super Mario 3D All-Stars has sold over 2.6 million units in the U.S. alone. And so clearly consumers have been able to jump in and enjoy that. And that's not a strategy that we're going to be using widely, but it's one that we thought was very unique uh, for the actual anniversary. Uh, not in my notes, uh, when pushed, when the interviewer said, well, what about people who buy a Switch in June of 2021? Are they going to be able to buy these games? Uh, Doug Bowser basically says, we're just focused on the celebration right now. <laughs> please, please shut the fuck up. <laughs> basically. <laughs> it's, it's like, I'm picturing like, a bu- like, uh, oh, Mario, yay! And a bunch of kids going, yay! And then the clock strikes midnight. He goes, give me that back! Yeah. He kicks the kid. <laughs> give me that game! Uh, He goes, uh, they ask him, uh, I think we went down. We did. Uh, uh, just keep going. All right. Uh, He then goes on to be asked, is, this, is Nintendo holding back games for a Switch Pro? Doug Bowser responds, let me just break it down. First, we're always looking at technology. And as we know, technology is constantly evolving and changing. And we're always looking at what is coming. uh, We always look at what is coming to determine how can we enhance it and improve the gameplay experience. And whether that's on a current platform or whether it's on a future platform, we're always looking at that. However, we also see right now, and we just talked about it, that the momentum on Nintendo Switch and Nintendo Switch Lite in its fourth year is strong. 
and we believe we're changing the tra- we're changing the trajectory of another typical console life cycle. And we will continue for the foreseeable future to really lean into both those platforms and the content that it comes with because it's the symbiotic relationship that makes the real difference. And that's why Nintendo Switch is so is so differentiated. First, the hardware form factor obviously is something that you can have a gaming system that you can play at home as a console and you can take on the go and play as the handheld mode virtually anywhere is unique and remains unique within the industry. But then the way we build games onto the platform and the way the partners build games onto the platform is really what matters and the experience that you have when you play it. So that's what we'll continue to lean into as we go as we go into really what will be the fifth year of the Nintendo Switch. And as Mr. Shintaro Furukawa, the president of Nintendo, mentioned in his corporate management meeting, uh, we believe that we're at the midpoint of this cycle on the platform. Hold on, this this stream completely crashed. We're okay. it's unrecoverable. Hold on. <laughs> hey, we're back. Hey, sorry guys, the Nintendo Gestapo is on to us, and they shut down our stream. Yeah, we're talking too much smack about Nintendo. Yeah. So before we before we got shut down, uh. The next topic of conversation was, is Nintendo holding back games for Switch Pro? And Doug Bowser gave basically a three-paragraph answer for no. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so basically there's a lot of nothing in this this interview. Yeah, and I wanted to talk about it because he does, like, the the interviewer is asking, like, pretty, uh, like, you know pretty decent questions uh things that you know he doug bowser probably can't come out and answer but things that i think the audience would want to have a definitive answer on and there's so much tap dancing there's so much tap dancing in this interview of he goes on to talk about joy con drift and the status of breath of the wild 2 and all these all those other games well, he's you know he's earned his uh, his his status. As, yes, as, as the uh, president of Nintendo America. Yeah. Uh, we we didn't we should have probably had an article here about Nintendo World Land World Land. Just, oh yes, just Japan Tokyo Nintendo Land. Um, yeah. you should watch it. Uh, Miyamoto did like a little walkthrough of uh yes. Nintendo. Super Nintendo World at Universal Studios Tokyo. Um, is it Tokyo? Because it's not in Tokyo. I think it... I'll look it up. I'm looking it up already. Oh, Osaka. Osaka. It's Osaka. Um, anyway, we've seen this before. It's the, the Mario Kart ride that they already previewed. Um, there's like a Toad Cafe... That looks really cute. Uh, you get this little wristband that you could use to pop question blocks and stuff. And yeah. Get points and whatever. Uh, it looks really cool. Uh, I will be there one day. Who knows when? Because uh, we're all dying. Happy Christmas! I, I got buddies. excited when he said that My they were planning on, the on putting them in California and Florida parks, which means I don't have to leave the country <laughs> to go to one. Yeah, that's gonna be a while. Also, the Florida one's going to smell like piss. Oh, yeah. Uh, Without a doubt. Sorry, my notifications weren't off again. Sea Soul, thank you for the five months. Ooh. Happy Christmas, buddies. My presence on the way. Thanks, dude. Oh, you have oh, stuff. Oh, thank you. You have stuff to unbox. Yes. Unbox. All right, last thing real quick. We got one more story here. All right. Uh, uh, well, we got two. We got the Halo games. Right. And we got Nintendo Year in Review. All right, real quick, Halo. Okay, so all the Halo games that came out on the Xbox 360, so Halo 3, ODST, Reach, Halo 4, um, and all the other weird crap that you don't play, Halo Wars, uh, those will all go offline uh, next year. So you will you will not be able to play the multiplayer on those games um, starting in December 2021. They're gonna they're gonna slowly you know roll that out throughout the year, but by the end of the year. Uh, you will no longer be able to play those games online on your Xbox 360. So I hope y'all bought the Master Chief Collection because that's the only way to play most of those games. 
online. That's unfortunate. However, the original Halo on the original Xbox has a community that still has servers up and stuff, I believe. Yes. Uh, well, because the original Halo did not have support online play, but it supported System Link. So mm-hmm. they probably use some like hackery to get System Link running across the internet. Oh, uh, right. Yeah. No, wait, wasn't it an Xbox Live game? Not the first one. No. Halo 2 was the Xbox Live one. Oh. Yeah. All right. So there you go. Public server now as we get Halo or play while you can. Yeah. Uh, last but not least, Nintendo released a thing. Year in review. I'm going to drop it in the chat so that uh, you can check it out yourself. So here's the tweet. You can all do it yourself. It just, you open it in your web browser and it shows you your year in review on Nintendo. And I got mine right mm-hmm. here, Will. Bob's 2020 Nintendo Switch Year in Review. Let's take a look back at your playtime with the Nintendo Switch system in 2020 and see how it's stacked up against 2019. What kind of gamer were you this year? According to your gameplay history, you're a core gamer. You're a skilled, experienced gamer who is always up for a challenge. That's not a... That's not a hardcore gamer. I got the same... I got the same thing, and something tells me you played a lot more Switch games than I did this year. I feel like uh, core, I feel like there's got to be something more than core. I'm a little mad. Yeah, I don't know what the. F- I wish they would show you like the other options you could have gotten. Well, you I know, think, I think when this happened last year, there was core and there was a uh, one like a passive one. You know, yeah, so there were two options. People are get say they're getting a Nintendo fan. What's that? Soft core gamer. <laughs> <laughs> 600 oh wait you have 680 hours oh wait here we go 435 hours in 2019 i played 575 i played less this year i, I you gave I, nothing nintendo yeah i don't want to say because my my answer is substantially less than that what is it what is it 53 jesus christ will that's like in in my defense sad in my defense uh, you stream games on yes. your Switch very, 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 very frequently, and I have a tiny human that I have to take care of. Otherwise, I go to jail. That is uh, the only reason that I have this many hours is because I stream <laughs> the games. Yeah. Uh, number of games played, 59. I don't believe that at all. Uh, yeah, so I have 24. I do not remember playing 24 Switch games this year. I don't know if I could name 10, to be honest. Yeah. Um, oh, you know what? I probably open games and close them just just to to test things out. Does it does it count the Switch Online games individually? That might be. Uh, all right. Uh, games you play the most: Smash Brothers, then Mario Maker. Believe it or not. Oh. Animal Crossing, Pokemon Sword, and Mario 3D All Stars. That all so- sticks out. So what's funny is my number four and five is exactly the same as you, except it's Pokemon Shield. <laughs> so my my top three is, and this is embarrassing, uh, Jedi Knight 2, Jedi Outcast, <laughs> then The Messenger, and then Jedi Knight, Jedi Academy. <laughs> wow. You played those that much? I guess. I mean, I played them to story completion. I, get, I didn't know... That was playing that's a the, long those... time. Is it? Is it yeah. longer than the messenger? <laughs> no. And I'm not even done with the messenger. Um, last year I had Nintendo Switch, Super Nintendo Entertainment System on there. Last year. Yeah. Your most active day by hours Saturday, February first. Excuse me. That's weird. That is mine was sense. mine was Saturday, April eighteenth, and I don't know why. <laughs> That's so weird. Yeah. Uh, in 2019, your I most didn't... active day was July 14th. Oh, that was Mario Maker Day, I think. I didn't play any Switch in October, November, or December. Jeez. Wow, you're... I'm, 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 a, I'm a fake gamer girl, Bob. <laughs> it's ever since you quit, Will. Yeah. Uh, I earned 2,770 my Nintendo points. Uh, I earned 752. Can we talk about my Nintendo points for a minute? Mm-hmm. What are the points of the platinum ones? 
I don't know what the point of any of them. Well, the gold ones, you get money, right? Those are just money. The gold ones, yeah. You can redeem the gold ones for uh, towards a game purchase on the eShop. The platinum ones, first off, I don't know how you accumulate them, but I have a lot, and they don't really do dick. They they use, can, I think they used to be my Nintendo points where you can redeem stuff, and they don't work anymore. You can not You can use the platinum points to, for, to redeem for, like, a calendar or a lanyard that you still have to pay shipping on. <laughs> um, dumb. Mario time. Your approximate number of games played starring Super Mario. Eight. One. And it was all stars. <laughs> your completed Mario missions on my Nintendo. Five. What? Oh, I think that was all about this. <laughs> so I didn't ever got that the son of a bitch you never got the pins oh i never did the, the challenge now i never did the stupid challenge i got the pins i'm a, I'm a real nintendo man god damn it was there only five missions i think i think there was more but you only needed five to get the pins i did all that the you missions. had to pay shipping on i did all the missions and never sent away for pins i'm an asshole yeah uh anyway what's next new year new fun based on your playlist you hear a few games you might like ultimate chicken horse pokemon shield <laughs> which is dumb to advertise that axiom verge snipper clips and pokemon let's go eevee i got uh star wars episode one racer <laughs> don't tempt me uh super mario party the witcher 3 wild hunt uh Dark Souls Remastered and wow. South Park The Stick of Truth. What a weird list. You, they're both the, Very uh, that's weird a list. Bad algorithm. Yeah. All right. Let's do the unboxing. And while we do the unboxing, we will talk to our people so we can wrap this up. Okay. All uh, right. Uh, so if you're here, is... if you're here, do do... talk in the chat. If you're here, yeah. talk in the chat. If you're if you're not here, leave a comment on the YouTube video, and we will get to it next week. Uh, yeah, just like some of these people in Discord did. All right. This so first one's from Nico, by the way. Oh, oh, already? Yay! Uh, we got Gabriel Cole who says, "Will any suggested comic reads featuring Wonder Woman and Cheetah uh, before uh, seeing the movie?" So actually, yes. Uh, the most recent Greg Rucka Wonder Woman comics; those were the start of the Rebirth era. Uh, those have a really good Wonder Woman Cheetah story arc to it. So read those. I believe the first three story arcs: it's Year One, The Lies, and The Truth. So check those out. Eddie Yoshi okay. says, "Don't have a co comment to make related to the video. Just that this podcast is always such a great treat when it pops in my sub feed. Thank you. Thank you. I hope it continues to pop into your sub feed. Uh, so we got another bottle opener. <laughs> Nico? She's, yeah. Wow. Uh, and then, oh, okay. I know you're excited for this. I know I am. I know exactly what it is. The, I know what it is. The He's Nico Air Glow." Nyko Airglow controller for the Nintendo Switch. Multicolor backlit LEDs. Fan cooled controller with force feedback function. Also works on the PC. There will be a video on this, uh, this eventually. I don't know when. Who? Mad Cats made the original. No, right? it was Nyko. It was Nyko? It was Nyko. Yes. Oh, wow. Uh, that's why. There you I'm go. Stoked. Bringing it back. So for those of you who don't know, this is a third-party Switch controller that has a fan built in uh, to it to keep your hands cool and make sure you don't sweat while for you play, the, play your game. For my salty, sweaty hands. This was my, they had a, a controller like this for the GameCube, and it was my favorite GameCube yes. controller. It was freaking yes. awesome. We, we, that was actually like our primary controller for a while because we got sweaty hands. I have a video on that controller, the GameCube one, and honestly, I take full responsibility for them making the new one. I think I am the reason they're doing as it. As you should. Uh, this next one, I'm not exactly sure who it's from. It looks like but... it might be from BitBoy. Yeah. Um. All right. Uh, boop, boop. I just want to say, before we go on, that uh, I had correspondence with a uh, fan of the show, uh, Neon Vexy, at 
Gomitastic on Twitter, uh, who was sending me. They found the Super Mario Brothers Star Tree Topper at their local GameStop. Oh. And they offered to send it to me for no mo- I offered to pay for it, would not accept money. It was a gift for all the entertainment that we provided them over the years. And I was so touched. It was supposed to come today. The post office is delayed on everything. <laughs> so I got to check back tomorrow. But I promised I'd give them a shout out on the show. So thank you so much. I'm going to go back tomorrow to find it. And hopefully uh, it'll be in, as well as uh, a gift for Bob that I was supposed to give him for Christmas. Hopefully it arrives in time. They're in the chat. They say it didn't make it to you. It's stuck in New York City. Yeah, I, I checked that. I mean, you New gave, York City. You gave him the P.O. box? Yeah. Oh, so it could, could be there tomorrow. Yeah, that's why I, I'm saying like New York City is a two-hour ride from. So I'm not worried. I'm more worried about your Christmas gift. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I, I I will. I'm st- I'm gonna be on Long Island all weekend. So if yeah, if it doesn't come well, worst Christmas... comes to worst, I'm gonna I'm just gonna print out a picture of it and give you the picture. Oh, thanks. Um, Keyhole says I'm really surprised they've already released Calico for the Switch. I helped crowdfund it, so I have a PC copy of the game, and it is incredibly jank right now. It feels like it's barely made it out of alpha it's a cute little game but boy does it need work in incidentally not a furry game though more power to them i just like relaxing games and cats that was the game we were crapping all over last week yes just saying it was a furry game trevor grover said the cat cafe game it's a commonly sit it's a community sim game it says so right in the tweet what's so hard to understand what's hard to understand trevor you watch the show all the time you should know what's hard to understand is that that's weird yes a community sim game a community sim furry game is not something you hear every day okay uh well you know and to be fair any game can be a furry game if you try hard enough that's true last one here we have parker who says excited for super meat boy forever since that game has taken a while to release and it will be interesting how that Mortal Kombat movie turns out. Right now, my expectations are pretty low. Keep up the great work, boys. Thank you, Parker. Thank you. Always keep your expectations low for video game movies. Yes. Uh, all right. I'm just trying to... This is all stuff from Gully Kit. Oh. And they're all like individually wrapped in like this. So I'm trying oh. to unwrap them to see just what the hell they are. That's unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. All right. One, one more thing. I just got piles and piles of boxes. Gully Kit, not the same as Genki. Get them confused a lot. Yeah. Okay. Gully so, Kit's the company that accosted me at E3 that one time. Yes, that was funny. I was there for that. Okay. So, first things first. We got Gully Kit King Kong Pro Controller. Again. I have that. Did, did you get this already? You yes. had this already. Yes, unless there's this- an updated version. I don't, I don't know, because this looks super fancy, at least on the box. It, it looks a little different. It looks like it has white under it. Oh, it comes in a nice plastic shell. Oh, you took it out already? I take, took it out because I want to like actually look at it to show you to see if it... Yeah, this looks like a different version. Okay, so maybe it's updated. Does it have white under the thumbsticks or no? It's got like silver. I have it's it like right silver here. under the thumbsticks. I have it right here. I like this controller for the macro functionality. I don't think it's good for anything else. <laughs> but it has a great macro function. So this is the one that I have. I have this look. Oh, yeah. Same, so right? It's the same. I think that this is an early prototype. Not prototype, but this is like an early unit, and this one's not right. as good. I think that one, they probably sent that because that one's better. So now, of course, I can't get it back in the box. But honestly, I get emails from them all the time. I don't think they realize that they've they send me stuff or that they've sent me stuff before. I think they just keep they've sent doing it. Two universal charging, universal controller charging docks. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I think. I don't know how that I think works. It's just like a plate. I think it's a plate, and you you plug a dongle into the controller. And then you just, yeah, and then you lie the controller on the plate dongle side. Does that make sense? No. (laughs) 
What else do they say? So, all right. Hold on. Uh, Joy-Con charging dock. That's cool. It's a Joy-Con charging dock. Uh, and, oh, they sent three universal controller charging docks. Uh, and then there's this. Oh, that's cute. This is the uh, Elves Pro Controller. That looks cute. Yeah. Looks nice. Did they leave a note or anything? Uh, I didn't. Just, well, just a, a Merry Christmas? Yeah. I think so. Uh, yeah, basically. Well, that was okay. nice so, so I think the way this universal control charging, this is the plate. Mm -hmm. And then this is the little dongle thing. Oh. And I think you have, yeah, so you got to like leave it like that. Oh, I understand. The, these parts connect to here. That's weird. Yeah. Uh Oh, this is not USB-C, it's micro USB. So what the hell is it for? Uh, I that's a good question. Uh, maybe their own controllers? Ooh. The dock itself. The dock itself is USB-C. The, these dongles are micro USB. The Gully Kit, the King Kong controller is USB C. So then, who are these controllers? These things for? Doesn't say what systems it's for. No. Oh, PS4. Yeah, I was gonna say PS4 it's on and the that's side. It. Yeah, that's it. That's weird. That's a weird thing to send. Yeah, but thank you anyway. Oh no, wait. So they sent. The reason why they sent three is because one's for PS4, one's for Switch Pro, and one's for the King Kong controller. Oh, which would which should also work for the Switch Pro, but I guess I guess they might be different heights, so you can yeah, lay it down. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Right, well, anyway, in the chat we oh, thank you, Gully. But in the chat we have Diet Shishide. <laughs> Diet Shishide. Is that for real? It's like an Italian thing. But anyway, yeah. how do you guys feel about the fi finale of The Mandalorian? I thought it was incredible. I loved it. It was great. It was beautiful. That's all I'm going to say. I don't yeah. want to spoil it. You got to watch all of The Mandalorian in order to appreciate yeah. it. Um, oh, cool. You finally got it, Bob. I tagged you about it on Twitter. What? Oh, the air, the air glow thing? Yeah. I got a lot of a lot of people tagged me in that. <laughs> uh, happy holidays, Wolf Bros. Will any of any thoughts on Tim Fox being named the new Batman in the comics? What? Uh, so that I still don't really know what's going on with that. Um, he's not the like the official new Batman. He's he's like the future, the Batman of the future, but not Batman Beyond Future. DC is doing this thing where they're. It's, it's called the future state where it's like a what if future scenario, but it's also not a what if future scenario. Um, I'm interested to see where it goes. Uh, Tim Fox, for those of you who don't know, is one of Lucius Fox's kids. Um, and he's just coming back and whatnot. So I'd be interested to see how it plays out. I'm going to read it regardless, but I don't really understand what they're doing with future state. <laughs> Violet Sprite says, did the PlayStation Android app download, were you able to finish a roll for the video and how much sleep did you get? This is because uh, yesterday I streamed for five hours, me trying to put Android back on my Switch. Yeah. I did it all over again, and uh, I've been doing it as we are doing this live stream. So uh, here it is. I'm currently installing Stadia. Uh, I had to do it all over again today because I realized I tried all I tried playing everything and nothing worked good. And I realized that you can spoof this to pretend like it's an NVIDIA shield, which I think is the only way to get Stadia to work. So I had to do it yeah. all over again, basically. Um, so we'll see if it works. Uh, the PlayStation app just straight up does not work. Xbox uh, Game Pass uh, is is bro is broke is buggy enough to not work. Uh, and same thing with Xbox game streaming stadia. I'm going to see right now. And I have a suspicion that it's not going to work good. And which is a little weird because Nintendo has a video saying that it works great. And I feel like I'm going to yeah. DM him and be like, did it actually work good or what? Cause, but then again, he had his switch spoofed as, uh, Nvidia shield. So 
if I do that, it might work good. I will say streaming from Steam worked great when I did it for the video back in the day. Uh, I'll have to re-download Steam Link and see if it works. I will not be sleeping for the next two days. <laughs> so I can't believe you're using the Animal Crossing Switch to install Android. Uh, nope. I fooled you. Uh, <laughs> these are the Animal Crossing Joy-Con. The dog chewed up part of it. That's why these are the spare Joy-Con. This is my launch switch. Uh, I put a sticker on it. My Animal Crossing switch is right here. And that's your default switch now. This is the one that I play everything on, yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Anything else to address here? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, Benji890, what does Will think of Wonder Woman 1984? I don't know. Haven't seen it yet. <laughs> Uh, I'm excited for it. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to be doing on Christmas. That. Oh, <laughs> uh, wait. ZC Cheesy says, uh, love that they sent the guy who played 50 hours of Switch games three different controllers. <laughs> He's closer to the P.O. box. That's it. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put an archive version of it up over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. So you can check it out over there to watch on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den Podcast and your preferred podcast service of choice. No matter where you watch or listen to us, though, be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on those respective stores. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Elliot of the Retro Future, for being here while we had a nice little conversation. Let us uh, go follow him and uh, let us know what you thought of the, the episode. And all, also, guys... Uh, guys, have a happy, have a Merry Christmas. We'll get here. Have a very Merry Christmas. Have a Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> a happy holiday. And yes. I appreciate you all. And we'll see you when it's all over in a week. Goodbye. Yep. Bye. Bye.